Imagine being able to have an audience of 800 million weekly active users, all being able to talk to and interact with your business. Well, that's exactly what OpenAI have announced in their recent dev day. In this video, we're going to attempt to put a live working shop inside the ChatGPT UI, all with a full checkout flow, product listings, and the fulfillment of the orders. By the end, we'll be able to see whether this launch will create an entirely new ecosystem and business opportunities for all of us. Or will it end up being another hyped product that never really takes off, like a few we've seen before? New Apps SDK gives us the ability to embed your business directly in the ChatGPT interface. For example, on release day, we saw ChatGPT directly talking to Spotify, building custom playlists right inside the UI. It's clear that OpenAI wants ChatGPT to become the front end of the entire web, a place where people can use and build apps within the chat interface. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and build a full online shop and these darts merch right inside the ChatGPT interface using the apps SDK with checkout, fulfillment and real products that actually show up on my door. Before starting the build, let's take a quick look of what OpenAI actually expects from developers and businesses using the new apps SDK because it's not a total free for all. OpenAI has laid out some best practices and design principles that every app needs to follow. It's a bit like you submit an app to the Apple store or the Google store. You can't just throw something together and hope it gets approved. You must meet their standards and it must feel right inside their ecosystem. The same applies here if you want your app live in ChatGPT. It has to feel like a natural part of the chat experience and not something bolted together from the outside. According to the docs, your app should do a few key things. It should keep the natural back and forth conversation flow rather than break it. You have to add real value. It's not enough to exist for the sake of novelty. The app should actually help the user achieve something useful. Take my shop for example, the user will be able to buy their darts hat from the shop. It should have a clear call to action. Users should always know what to do next, whether it's add to cart or book now, or it will continue the chat thread. It needs to be easy to summarize. At the end of the interaction, ChatGPT should be able to summarize what clearly happened. OpenAI encourages developers to think carefully about scope. Apps should be built for one thing, and it should do that one thing very well. Not trying to be an everything at once app. So if your app's about shopping, it should own that experience from browsing to checkout without trying to handle unrelated stuff like customer support or marketing automations. I think this is smart because it creates the quality high and ensures every app feels like it belongs in ChatGPT. It's also a reminder that what we're building isn't for traditional websites or a traditional plugin. It's the extension of the conversation itself. So with the best practice in mind, let's move on and see how I can create my own shop directly inside ChatGPT. So you might be thinking, how does this work? Well, it's pretty simple. It's built on top of MCPs, Model Context Protocol, this was recently released by Anthropic a few months ago. This has become the gold standard of how tools are being defined for LLMs to read. It sort of acts as a standard framework for how developers connect tools to chat interfaces. Think of it like a one size fits all. You can build the tool once and it's compatible with all the other models and providers. So if you build a tool for ChatGPT agents, you can also drag it across and use it in Gemini, Claude and any other provider. One of the more powerful features that people are experimenting with is which is returning metadata. This is what ChatGPT's apps SDK is built on top on. Metadata can include things like app information, which ChatGPT apps SDK can use to render live widgets inside the chat UI. This is exactly how the apps SDK works. It allows us to create dynamic interactive UIs right within the ChatGPT window. I'll show you a quick code snippet of the metadata structure ChatGPT needs to render the UI. As you can see, ChatGPT is expecting various properties to be passed back to the window to render the app from the MCP. One thing I'm really excited to see about this rollout is whether it creates completely new ecosystems of businesses. Think about it, just like how traditional SEO shaped how websites is competed for Google rankings, we might see developers and businesses battling out through prompt engineering to make their chat GPT tools stand out. And if you look at the docs, there's actually multiple discovery methods on how your app can surface to inside chat GPT which could open up a new wave of competition and innovation. All right, now we understand the rules of the game. Let me show you what exactly I built. 
and the tech stack I used and a few interesting challenges I got along the way. To host the MCP server, I started up by spinning the Nest.js service. I hit a snag pretty early on. I was using Nest's abstraction of server-side events and for some reason ChatGPT and the MCP inspector just would not connect to it. So I scrapped that approach. I created a raw HTTP server using the NSGS still, but I, uh, I sort of bypassed all the abstractions. So this service works directly in my main TS file, which is not normally what you'd do. But just to get it running for a demo, I have just left it in here. So now that I've created this raw HTTP server to run the MCP service directly, that will fix the connection issues I had. I recommend just using a different framework like Fastify or just Express, just to get the simple MVP up. It doesn't actually take much to get these servers running. When you're setting up these MCP servers, there's a few standard endpoints you need to implement. These are the ones that every LLM will call when trying to connect. The key thing is to make sure these endpoint names are structured and match exactly to what the MCP documentation say. If they don't, ChatGPT won't recognize your server. Have a look here. We've got the tools list, which will list the tools for the MCPs. And um, we've got resource lists and resource read. And the, the home one is forward slash MCP. Just here. Since my backend was running locally, I needed to make it reachable for the web. So that's why I used ngrok to tunnel my local server and generate a public URL. Once you've got that URL and your server is running and you finish developing the MCP, you head over to ChatGPT and you must turn on developer mode. It's in settings, apps connector, advanced settings, then you just flick it on. Now you need to add your new tool. So you press create. Now I'm not going to leave it icon, but I'll call it darts shop. World's best dart shop. So you paste your URL in. So here's mine. Uh, it won't be live when this video is here. So don't try pinging me. Um, no authentication for this one. I understand because that's just the legal stuff they're putting in. So then I press create. Once you press create, it'll then connect a connection to my MCP server. Now this tool is active in my chats. If I go over to developer mode, click more, the Dart shop will be there. Don't worry too much about following along. I'm just showing you the ins and the outs of the apps SDK. This is not a technical deep dive. Um, I'm planning to release the boilerplate and it will be using Fastify and React. So if you want to use that, I'll probably have it in the description below after this video has gone out. Um, I just need to clean it up a bit before I release it. So that's basically the backbone of the apps SDK, how it works. It runs basically through connecting to a live MCP, which will be serving a bundle of your front end code, which will then render in the chat UI. So you might be wondering, how does this MCP render front end code in the chat UI interface? Well, on the front end, it's basically just a React app. You basically build components like a normal website, except there's one key difference. You have to bundle the app yourself and return directly to your MCP server. So once your front end's been bundled, it gets passed to the server. This is the component.js file. This is what's actually served to the ChatGPT UI. The MCP server now is responsible for rendering it in the ChatGPT. And in one of my tools, it's a product gallery.html. This is a file that I've created inside the service, which points to my bundle file, which eventually will show the code on the front end. As I mentioned earlier about the metadata being really crucial being passed back to the front end. As you can see here, these two lines, OpenAI slash widget accessible, OpenAI can results produce a widget. This will render the widget on the front end and show the user the React code. So just to summarize, I've had to bundle the React app myself and return it from the MCP server whenever the ChatGPT calls the browse product tool, which will then render this. It's all documented in the SDK's docs. I'll leave the link in the description below. Also in the docs, they provide you with some useful React hooks to help you manage state. These hooks give you the ability to talk to the ChatGPT environment from your app. First, we've got the use OpenAI Global. 
This subscribes to global values from ChatGPT like theme, display mode or tool output. Next we've got the use tool output. This gives you the access to whatever your tool just returned in real time. Next we've got the one that I use the most. This is called the use widget state. This keeps your app's local state in sync with ChatGPT, so both sides stay up to date without loops. Next, use theme and display mode. These let you match your ChatGPT's light, dark mode and layout styles. Basically, these snippets are a bridge between your React front end and ChatGPT's internal state, letting your app feel like a native part of the chat instead of something running on the side. For the actual shop, I integrated Fourth Wall for the storefront and fulfillment. They handle print on demand and checkout, which made it the process much simpler to make this app. Once everything was wired up, I went ahead and placed a real order. And yeah, I'll show you how it all turned out. So now I'm inside the ChatGPT UI. We're going to test the shop. For the simple sake, I'm just going to select it from here and say, can we search products in my shop? Don't forget to say please. So now it's calling my MCP server. You'll see calling tools, which then returns that bundled front end. It's currently loading the products and now it's showing me the one product I have in my shop. So from then I can add a product to my cart, which is making another MCP call tool, which I will show you here. As you can see, it called my MCP and it returned some structured content. And in that structured content was my cart ID. From there, I can create a checkout to my fourth wall shop, which I'll be able to fulfill my order and it will turn up at my house. So that's how I created a shop inside ChatGPT. So I hope this has opened your mind to how many opportunities that could come from this if this tech really takes off. Right now, the app's SDK is still in developer testing mode, but OpenAI have confirmed it'll be rolling out later this year. If that happens, we might be looking at entirely new ecosystems, one where businesses live inside ChatGPT instead of traditional websites. I'll be experimenting more with this over the next few weeks. So if you're curious about this, make sure you stick around and hit the subscribe button and the like. The next wave of web might just start here. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.